Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Joel Rosen. I am an adrenal fatigue recovery ninja and I'm here today to talk to you about adrenal fatigue, uh, free cortisol, free cortisone, sleep, and something called 11-beta-HSD. So what does that mean to you? Well, if you're watching this video and you're suffering with an adrenal fatigue problem, then chances are your cortisol levels are spiking too high, you feel worn out, you feel burnt out, you feel like you're breaking down, you get anxious, shaky, lightheaded, jittery, uh, your blood sugar falls too low, um, potentially you get anxiety, um, potentially you get shortness of breath or you get dizzy when you stand up quickly, maybe your circadian clocks are broken, meaning you wake up in the morning with very little energy and then you never really get energy throughout the whole day and then maybe towards the end of the day you get better energy or maybe your energy goes up and down, up and down. Suffice to say you don't have bounding amounts of energy when you first get up in the morning and then you don't fall asleep and hit the bed like a baby and fall, and, and fall asleep right away. So today I want to talk to you about the relationship between cortisol and cortisone and especially as it relates to free cortisol. So free cortisol is the uh, property of cortisol that is not bound to a protein and is available for use. And so that's why we call it free cortisol. And, and free cortisol levels represent about 3% of the total cortisol that has been used up in the body. So number one, it's very important to do an accurate test where you don't just measure free cortisol via a saliva sample because at the end of the day, that's only going to tell you what 1-3% to of your total cortisol that has been used up in the day and this only represents 1-3% to that's available at any one time. That's rule number one. Rule number two is if you only use that as a, a marker to find out if your cortisol levels are too high or too low and you find out that your free cortisol levels are very, very high, that doesn't necessarily mean that you have a abounding amount of cortisol throughout the whole day. And I've been guilty of this myself where I only did saliva samples and I measured someone's free cortisol levels and they were through the roof and then I suggested something like um, fossil tidal searing to bring their levels down only to find out that when I do a Dutch test where it measures the urinary metabolites and we look at the total spent cortisol throughout the day, we see that that's very low. So maybe they just have a lot of cortisol at any one time, but at the end of the day, they didn't produce very much at all. And here I was giving them some nutrients to bring their cortisol levels down. So number two, I would suggest doing a total um, urinary total cortisol test, which is called the Dutch test. But on the Dutch test, they show a relationship between cortisol and cortisone and cortisol is the usable active form and cortisone is the inactive form and a lot of the times your body will naturally instinctively upregulate or downregulate this enzyme called 11 beta HSD which will help convert into cortisone or cortisol depending on need so what I find a lot of the times with my acute based chronically stressed patients is a lot of the times their free cortisol levels are very very high and such is their 11 beta HSD is converting into free cortisol and and that's not a protective mechanism what we want to do is we want to switch the 11 beta HSD into producing the inactive form of that free cortisol and that will help someone sleep a little bit better so what are some of the things that will help um, or, or have a predisposition for more cortisone versus cortisol is hyperthyroidism. I just had a patient who has been taking so much um, TSH and Synthroid that she is in a hyperthyroid state and her cortisone levels were super, super high. And here she was, she was underproducing free cortisol. So she didn't have a lot of free cortisol available for use because she's chronically stressed. And on top of that, she's taking so much medication that it's causing the 11 beta HSD activity to steal whatever cortisol activity she does have and put it into the inactive form. Other things like good quality sleep. So if we're sleeping well, that will help convert the free cortisol into cortisone. If you have too much 11-beta HSD that's producing too much free cortisol, the active form, you're constantly broking, breaking down, feeling tired, feeling exhausted, feeling worn and torn. You may want to increase 11-beta HSD into the cortisone in active form. Supplements like that are Magnolia, um, something called Scutellaria, Zisphus, testosterone, not that I recommend that, 
and citrus peel extract. Those are supplements that, hey, if you're not sleeping very well at night, perhaps if you can upregulate your 11 beta HSD activity and give you into more of a cortisone inactive form, that'd be really, really helpful. So these supplements, Zisphrus and citrus peel extract and magnolia could be really, really good. On the other hand, what are things that make more active um, cortisol? Hypothyroidism. So if someone is hypothyroid, they have very little energy and their um, TSH levels are above 3.0, then potentially they're going to produce more cortisol. Um, licorice root, that is an adrenal stimulant. So that's something that's going to help produce more cortisol so that you can meet your daily needs. Grapefruit extract will help that as well. Um, if someone has a lot of visceral obesity or they have extra body fat, that's going to convert into cortisol. So one of the things that is very helpful for you to reduce your free cortisol levels and not be constantly being breaking down your, your, your stored glycogen is lose weight. Um, also regulate your blood sugar, high insulin and taking too much sodium. So hopefully you found this uh, video a little bit um, brain provoking. Um, probably you found it a little bit confusing. I, I would like you to watch it again. But suffice to say there's two different types of free corti cortisol readings. One is the active form and one is the inactive form. And if you're just doing a blood test in the morning and looking at your cortisol levels, it's not telling you anything about your cortisone you're used up, or it's not telling you anything about your free cortisol level that is available for use. Secondly, there's an enzyme that helps convert one into the other, and depending on your condition, you may want to upregulate one towards the inactive form or one towards the active form. And the only way you really learn about this is through a Dutch test. So um, hopefully you found this video um, very, very educational. My name is Dr. Joel Rosen. Um, you can give me a thumbs up, a share, a like, a comment. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel or check me out on my blog. It's adrenalfatiguesociety.com or I do have a Facebook page at Adrenal Fatigue Society. Uh, my name is Dr. Joel Rosen and I look forward to helping you with your adrenal fatigue nightmare. Thank